Hello there YouTube, this is Necrostevo and it's time for our team builder for week 4 against the Boston Weasels in the Alpha Pokemon League. Now if you don't want to sit through the team builder, there will be a link in the description to jump right into the battle. Otherwise, let's go over our team. Of course, our opponent is the coach Diglett Dreams, and his team is Tapu Fini, Volcarona, Lycanroc Dayform, Decidueye, Zebstrika, Gligar, Gengar, Sharpedo, Alucha, Zygarde, and Zatu. So he has a lot of very fast Pokemon. His slowest Pokemon is Decidueye at base 70 speed. And uh, yeah, this is a very poor matchup for us actually. Um, he has access to Volcarona as his Z user alongside Tapu Fini to remove entry hazards. Um, Zatu and like spin blocking with, with Gengar and bouncing things back with Zatu is annoying. Uh, his other speedy Pokemon like Zepstrika or, or even Hawlucha can put a serious hurt on my team too depending on their coverage moves. So we have to get come a little bit creative with this matchup. And that means we're bringing Burn Up Arcanine. For those of you who are not familiar with Burn Up, it's a very powerful special attacking move that removes the user's fire type after it's being used and you have to be fire type when you use it. Um, but you know, 130, perfect accuracy, no drawbacks other than losing your fire type. But losing my fire type is really nice for this matchup because after I'm no longer a fire type, that means that the Zygarde and the uh, Gligar can't one hit KO me when they come back in to take a hit or a revenge kill or something like that. So we just went with Timid max speed there because at least I could tie with his uh, Zygarde. It's much more likely that he'll bring Adamant just for the extra attack boost on the Zygarde, but I want to be able to tie with it just in case. Um, Z, Grassy MZ Solar Beam is nice to hit the top of Fini. It gives me a way to hit Gligar coming in if I'm in that weird situation uh, where he's like, oh, he's gonna go for Wild Charge, switching Gligar. Okay, then I can hit the Gligar with something at least. Uh, and for the most part, unless he brings like a really specially defensive Gligar, um, Grassy MZ, Bloom Doom into Hidden Power Ice is going to take out most Gligar. Uh, up next we have our Mega Tyranitar back once again with the Mega. This time we're going for a Pursuit set. Because he has Decidueye, Gengar, and Zatu all very prone to being Pursuit Trapped, I definitely want that option. And on top of that, he just doesn't really have a lot of solid switch to Dark types uh, outside of his Halucha. Um, Tapu Fini does come in, but like a crunch followed up by a stone edge does a serious amount of damage to it. So it's not really, it's like a very soft check to a Mega Tyranitar. Um, I don't have max attack on this Tyranitar. I went max HP in order to better take hits from the likes of his Gengar, from his Abstrika, to a lesser extent of uh, the Decidueye. By going max HP, for example, Decidueye can't two hit KO me with Leaf Blade. Uh, so that's just an example. Um, the speed investment is to outspeed Tapu Fini with zero speed investment. That was just to hit that benchmark, especially with an adamant nature. Uh, otherwise though, it's just kind of here to, to kind of swap in, maybe chew a couple of hits from the likes of Lycanroc or Zepstrika or like a Gengar locked into Sludge Bomb or something like that, and then hit something on its way out. After that, we have our Assault Vesper Raquinid. This is one of our checks to the Volcarona. Volcarona is very threatening in this matchup depending on the coverage move or the Z move that he brings. So I want to be able to check that no matter what. Araquan is even better in this uh, checking role just because it can't be burned by the flame body because of water bubble. And um, if for some reason he does get set up, Assault Vest just really laughs at any type of setup that Volcarona does. Granted, he could very easily bring Volcarona with Z Bloom Doom and get to plus two or three and then blow my Araquan it away. But then at the very least, I've made him waste his Z move in that regard. Um, really, Liquidation is gonna be the main move I'm clicking here, but it's nice to have the Lunge or the Leech Life in order to grab a little bit of HP, or if needed, grab uh, an attack decrease on something like uh, Decidueye trying to swap into the water move. Next, we have our Florgis with Moon Blast, Psychic Synthesis, Call Mine. Well, I cannot speak today, this is a rough, this is like my fourth take trying to do this, and I guess I'm, I just need to take a take a step back. But anyways though, 
That moveset basically sets up on the Tapu Fini. Uh, it also can set up on the Volcarona. It can also set up on Gligar. Um, to a lesser extent, it can set up on Zatu. And with the speed investment, once again, just that benchmarked out speed, the Tapu Fini. And the defensive investment is to make sure that Gligar can't three hit KO me without leftover. It's a guaranteed four hit KO. Um, I just decided to bring Synthesis and Calm Mind because, yeah, he might bring Toxic, but this sets up all over his face and there's not much he can do about it unless he has like a banded physical attacker. And even then I can live a hit and hit it back relatively hard. Like if he has a banded like in rock day for him. Um, Dodrio is here just for that little bit of assurance in the back. Life War, max speed, uh, Brave Bird return knockoff quick attack. Again, not that many dark type switch ins and Tapu Fini hates losing its leftovers if it's trying to come in. And then, um, What's also nice is just quick attack for priority. Uh, if Halucha somehow gets set up against me, I can quick attack it. Um, it's also nice for Volcarona. I hope I'm not in the position where I need to use those as my last ditch efforts, but they're there just in case. Uh, also, Dodrio being the fastest Pokemon on my team helps if he's trying to run more attack oriented options instead of going max speed. Maybe I can get the jump on a few of his Pokemon that way too. Uh, in the last slot, we actually have our dedicated lead for this week, which is our Garchomp with the Yachi Berry. Uh, Stealth Rock, Outrage, Rock Slide, and Earthquake checks so many things on his team. Uh, Yachi Berry does allow me to take a Hidden Power Ice from either the Volcarona or the Zepstrika. Um, Gengar can run Icy Wind, but I don't think he'll stay in with Gengar against my Garchomp anyways, so I don't have to worry about that too much. Uh, Stealth Rock is just there to pressure his team. He really has to be worried about removing Stealth Rock because he's running Volcarona. So if I'm in that position where, oh, I'm in against a Zatu, I can even just Rock Slide that thing right in the face and not have to worry about too much there. Uh, I did decide to go Outrage, Rock Slide, Earthquake, and forego the Dragon type um, stab. Um, as far as like Dragon Claw going weaker, because it's pointless to go weaker this week with how fast his team is. I need to be able to knock things out immediately and Outrage provides that raw power that I kind of need for that. Uh, and no Stone Edge because if I'm using it on one of my faster Pokemon this week, I have a chance to flinch something like the Gengar, like the Gligar or the Tapu Fini. I want to take that flinch chance if I can. I don't really want to afford to miss with, with Garchomp if I need to. So that's the team. Hopefully this works this time. And thank you guys so much for taking a moment to watch the team builder. Alrighty guys, so thank you so much for watching the Team Builder. If you didn't, a brief rundown of the team is going to be our Burn Up, Hidden Power Ice, Grassium, Z, Arcanine, our Mega Tyranitar with Pursuit, Crunch, Stone Edge, and Ice Punch. Araquanid here rocking the Assault Vest to help check the, check the Arac, um, his Volcarona. Our physically, mostly physically defensive, well, it's really, it's like a mixed defensive against Florges with Calm Mind. Uh, Life Orb Dodrio, access to Quick Attack there. And of course, our lead chomp with Stealth Rocks, Yachiberry Outrage, and Rock Slide. So we'll get right into the match here. You can see that he did bring Volcarona, Zygarde, and Tapu Fini. I knew those were probably coming against my team. Did not see Zepstrika or Gligar coming, just because of like my Araquanid or my obvious Garchomp and Tyranitar core there. But Halucha is a little bit annoying for my team to deal with, so we have to make sure that does not get set up behind a substitute with Unburden, because it would outspeed my whole team, and I would be relegated to letting it get shipped down by Sandstorm or picking it off with Dodrio, so neither of which I really want to deal with. Now you can see here, he does lead with his Gligar, and I lead with my lead chomp. Uh, I figured we would just exchange rocks, but he actually ends up going for knockoff, which is fine by me too. I don't like losing my Yachi Berry in this matchup, because it does help me check Ice Beam on Tapu Fini or Hidden Power Ice on Zepstrika. But, eh, Stealth Rock's up. It's pretty nice. Um, based on the damage from that Rock Slide, I know that he is a defensive Tapu Fini. So there's a good chance that my uh, several of my Pokemon will outspeed him, including my Tyranitar. I figured he would go for Defog here or Moonblast, and so I went into my floor just to take that hit or get a free opportunity to set up. And since he just has leftovers, I went for Moonblast, hoping for the Spadef drop on his Volcarona. But I don't get it as it comes in. Um, and I didn't want him to go for Quiver Dance for free, so I just started immediately going for Calm Minds. He actually has Fiery Dance, which has a chance to, it's like a 50% chance to raise your special attack when it hits. 
And so if he's going to be getting those special attack drops from Moonblast, that's fine. But I also want to be able to make sure I take his hits. So Psychic is actually pretty nice here, even though he didn't bring his Gengar, um, because Moonblast is resisted. And I am going to switch to going for Moonblast, because Psychic has the chance of the Spadef drop, but I'd rather have the special attack drop in this situation. Uh, we do see that his Fiery Dances aren't doing that much, even with his special attack raised, because I basically neutralized that. And he goes for his Z move, which is a Savage Spin Out, so maybe on the Bug Buzz. But with my Spadef boosted, it doesn't really do anything. Um, if he had maybe the Furium Z in the Fire type move, that would have been a little bit of an issue there. But this is actually great. The way he brings in Zygarde, I think that is Banded. And Banded is the only way he can knock out my floor just from that range with 1,000 uh, arrows. So I go right into Arachnid, knowing, okay, I can basically get off a free hit here. I go for a Liquidation. If Tapu Fini came in like it did, Really, I'm just whittling it down. It can only come in like that so many times on my team. Uh, I do go out directly into my Arcanine here, expecting him to either go for his um, Fairy-type move or maybe Calm Mind. And even with Calm Mind from that range, I can possibly knock it out with the Z Bloom Doom. He brings in Gligar, and I get to go for my Hidden Power, but it doesn't KO because he's a Spadef Gligar. That's okay, though, because here we're just going to go for Burn Up. I get rid of my fire type, and that means Zygarde can't come back in and revenge kill me. Uh, that also means um, that Tapu Fini can't come back in and kill and do a lot of damage with like a Scald or a Surf or anything like that. Um, he does go for the Banded Extreme Speed. Even at neutral attack level with the Choice Band, he's not able to 2 hit KO my Arcanine, which is great. I know that he's locked in though, so I'm going to go out to Tyranitar, Mega Evolve, and he is trapped here because I know that I'm faster. Most likely. No, I'm probably not faster. But if he was like a really bulky variant, he couldn't KO me anyway with the um, with being locked in on uh, extreme speed. So I didn't want to let his Halucha have that free chance of the setup. So I figured if he went for high jump kick and KO'd my Tyranitar, I would have to unfortunately let Tyranitar go down. But if I stay in here and I just keep on going for Ice Punch, I f I'm letting number one, he has to take extra damage from the Sandstorm. Number two, he won't be able to get out of the situation with a um, substitute up. This is important for two reasons. Number one, if I bring an Arcanine like this, I get an Intimidate off on it with a substitute down. And so yes, my Arcanine does go down, but now he's basically neutered, unless he has Swords Dance, which he hasn't revealed at this point. Uh, so now I can bring in Dodrio. It was a 50-50 here if he was going for a substitute, but I figured he would because he might be expecting some type of priority attack from me. And it was a roll to put him in range of whether or not he could get another substitute. So I just went straight for return. And now I'm going to go for quick attack, making him too weak to get up his substitute again. Uh, he could have just attacked me, but if he had done that, then I could have just gone back out to Tyranitar, gotten the Sandstorm up, and then he would have gone down to that. Now he goes out to Zeb Strika and goes for his hidden power here. I just went for quick attack to ensure that he was in range for an attack here. And since he keeps on going for hidden power ice, I would guess... That means that it's probably choiced in some way. Not doing very much damage, so I'm going to guess Choice Scarf, which makes sense because that would outspeed my entire team. Um, here, we do see that my Tyranitar's investment is enough to out to outspeed the Tapu Fini, and that means that we pick up another victory. So we win 4-0 against the Boston Buizels, and that means we are going 4-0 for the season so far. So thank you so much, Digla Dreams, for the battle. His information for at least his Discord and such will be in the description here. And hopefully we can keep this uh, undefeated train going on here. I'm I'm liking the experience that I'm getting with these Pokemon. And it's a really good experience for these other leagues that I'm in too. Because they have a little bit of different drafting roles. So getting to play around with a few sets here and there is nice. Yeah. And um... <clears throat> I am also curious to see what you all think of that Arcanine set. I did manage to breed it in game, but as you see, we ended up using it on Showdown. Let me know what you guys think about Arcanine, kind of getting rid of its fire type weaknesses and being able to attack more on the special side. I thought it was a cool set, but I'd be interested to hear what you guys have to say as well. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Goodbye now.